There we go. Okay. For some reason, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it didn't pick up my mic. Now it does. Hello, SolarLoon here. I'm an independent game developer. I'm the creator of, uh, well, Iquia. That's the game that I was showing off a little bit there, or that's, I, I wanted to try to switch up my waiting screen a little bit and actually like make it animated. So I'm working on it. Anyway, <laughs> I just figured there's a lot in Iquia that I've done already. I figure it would be a good uh, waiting screen just with the rain and, you know, people walking around and stuff like that. So anyway, hello, I'm an independent game developer uh, and musician and stuff. Uh, and yeah, I, I made the song you heard there. I made the game, making the game that uh, you, you saw there. And uh, yeah, that's what that's what I do. I make stuff. And so uh, today we're going to be working on a load runner like game that I've been working on for the past few days or few weeks. Uh, got a little distracted a little while ago uh, because I started working on master plan to try to like rewrite it completely from scratch. And it is going not too poorly. Uh, it's a little interesting, a little bit different compared to uh, the previous iteration, but it still works pretty well. Um, or at least it will work pre pretty well. So I have just the ability to play stuff and the ability to move things around. Uh, so that's still a work in progress. I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, what we're going to be working on today is a game that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. It's a game kind of like Load Runner. It's an arcade game. And we're going to be working on that a little bit and uh, hopefully get something in there, like uh, an enemy and the ability to place doors. I, th I think I said I was going to do that last stream and I didn't get around to it for some reason. I don't remember why. Well, because I was moving to SDL2, that's why. But yeah, I got everything moved over. And so uh yeah, we should be good to go. Good to kind of uh, get get back to uh you know, get back to work. Uh so you can move around, you can climb ladders, you can pick up uh dollar bills, you can fall, uh you can go through doors uh or attempt to go through doors that are uh, not connected or go through doors that are connected and that's the game so far so we're going to be working on it a little bit more and trying to make something uh, a little bit more deep and fleshed out so hello everyone in chat how's everyone doing today hopefully everyone's doing well um, and people were saying Oh, Irving said had, he hadn't seen that shrug. Such per, such personality. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's it's a little bit, a little bit something extra, something a little bit extra. Um, yeah. It, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I okay. So Irving says it's been inspiring watching these streams lately. I'm running a dumb game in Pico Eight to warm up to game dev. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I I've never gotten into Pico Eight or uh, what's the I'm getting confused. Pico 8 and the thing that came before or after. I don't remember what it was. I guess Pico 8 is the... Because you got Voxatron, and then Lex Lawful, who made Voxatron, made Pico 8, right? And then there was another thing that people usually... Like, people frequently use. It was either Pico 8 or something else. Pico is the 3D one. Pico 8 is the 2D one. Pico 8 is the one I'm thinking of. Anyway, uh, that's kind of the thing that I would get into, but I never, I never got into it. I should make something uh, with, like, Pico 8 or some other... Uh, Mega, uh, Mega, uh, Mega Zooks or some other like virtual console kind of uh, program. Virtual Mega Zooks. I I will stay on Mega Zooks to the day I die, till the day I die. Mega Zooks or Zooks or Zeus, whatever. Mega Zooks is such a like. <laughs> I I just can't get enough of it, dude. It was so weird and esoteric, but it's so cool. I wish uh it got a little bit more play. Anyway. Uh, hello to everybody, but yeah, Irving, uh, yeah, please do keep it up. Uh, Don Duval says, uh, to think all this was stuff I created, including the track, yeah. I have talent. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, Irving, the amount of output this guy has is, is astounding. I haven't been making very much recently. <laughs> this is kind of like in the past year and a half, two years I've been working. My output is like dropped. It like came up and then it dropped. So it's, it's not natural for like, you know, you to i think go through different phases because of maybe maybe just time you know lacking time things like that i wouldn't say i'm like particularly talented uh i think i just put a lot of time in and i think anyone can put a lot of time in and make cool stuff i don't think you should feel like oh i'm a snail i'm slow because you know this guy is making stuff and i'm not it's like well i'm making stuff but then the guy i'm looking at is making stuff that i'm not like 
you know, there's always someone out there who's better than you at things you like would like to do or is making cool stuff that is, in your opinion, cooler than the things you make. Uh, I think that's just a natural part of being you is you'll you'll always only see it from your perspective. And so you look at something and see just what it is, whereas someone else sees something different. So anyway, don't get discouraged. Keep making stuff. Uh, don't stop making things because someone else is making things. No, that's way too loud. Way too loud. Let's bump that down right about there. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, let's go with this. Rashad Z says, yo, sup, how's it going? So this is our arcade game in, in production. It is a 2D action arcade game. It's gonna have uh, enemies that follow you around and if they touch you, you die. Um, and the goal will basically be to get all the all the money in the level and then move on. 4-Bit Fri Fri Friday says, hey yo, sup, how's it going? It's been a while. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm working on this really simple uh, 2D arcade game made in Go with Go SDL2 and uh, shaping up, looking pretty good. So there's a couple things that we want to do this time around. Um, and actually, let me double check this. Should be working fine. Controller is indeed working fine. You have to have it uh, that the this is the proper control mechanism. You're supposed to hold a controller like this. Everyone who holds it down is doing it wrong. No, this is just to show you that it's working. But yeah, it's working. That's cool. So controllers are working with input binding. Uh, should be rebindable. Keyboard is working. Well, actually, we'll have to change things around a little bit to make the keyboard rebinding work or the key rebinding work a little bit better. Um, but yeah. Game's, uh, game's working. Uh, Rashazi says, what made you name the project Door Jam? Um, because it's a cool name, it has jam in it, so that feels action-y. And uh, also it has door in it, and the game is about door going through doorways. And you'll be able to place doors to like go through them and stuff like that. So it's it just, it works. You have doors, you go through doors, uh, enemies can go through doors, and so you're kind of trying to use doors both as a you know, means of traversing the level as well as on a tactical standpoint because when you, I, I think I'm gonna change this so that it's not instant like this. I think instead it's going to be maybe something where you travel in the back plane, like you, it takes time to go through it. So it's a tactical thing. Like you wanna go through doors when you, there's no one on the other side, but you can also be safe in the middle. So you kind of have to like time your entry and exit and stuff like that. It, it's something that I'll have to kind of feel a little bit as I work on it, but I think there's definitely uh, potential there. Uh, I'm going to zoom this in a little bit, make sure that everybody can see. Okay, so yeah, uh, cool. So what we're going to do now, I forgot what I said we were going to do. I remember one was create an enemy. Um, maybe GUI, that might be cool. Like. Uh, Amount of money, number of deaths. Level. Uh, that's probably it. Enemy that follows you, kills on contact. Uh, yeah. All right, so this is gonna be our, our basically what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and commit the changes I've made so far, uh, which is, yeah, Migrating to SDL2, it looks like. Yep. So we just migrated all of everything. We're just gonna commit everything. We no longer have. Can we tidy that up a little bit? There we go. No more Evy10. Okay. Now we're using Go SDL2. All right. Uh, so we should be good. I think we should be good. SEL2 is like, it's it's so weird compared to like Ebiton 
or other frameworks like maybe Love 2D. I know Love 2D uses SDL and there's some like shared concepts, but it feels so much different uh, compared to Ebiton or Raylib. It feels like it's so much lower level. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm I'm guessing how to use the the library and I'm I'm using it pretty correctly I think but at the bottom at the end of the day it's like man this is like it's some things are harder and some things are easier it's an interesting combination because like uh being able to tell like oh yeah you're pressing the A button on the gamepad is like pretty simple with SDL but like rendering like making a camera is like it's pretty hard it's <laughs> making a camera is harder it's kind of like an interesting interchange interesting exchange anyway let's commit this uh that's fine we'll just commit it like that let's push oh i don't have your remotes okay i'll do that later all right uh okay so what we're gonna do here uh we're gonna work on the gui we're gonna work on enemies but let's make an enemy um let's actually design him i suppose uh we will design the enemy like so But main character is 24 by 24. We will de design an enemy that is the same size. Um, it will be a robot in a suit because that feels appropriate. Actually, that cutout was pretty good. Make him a nice appealing steel gray color. like that kind of a design let's see all right so then Let's either do this or do that. Let's do, let's make him redder. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. William says, can you make a list of all the software used for game development? Um, sure. I'm, I'm not going to make a list, but I will tell you what I use right now. Uh, I use A Sprite for sprites. I use Renoise for music. I use VS Code for coding. I use Golang and GoSDL for this game. Uh, that should basically be everything you need to make the, the game I'm making here. Um, that's basically it. The cool one says, is that a brick monster? It's actually a robot, but now that you mention it, it does look like a brick monster. 
Let's lean into that. Let's make him a brick monster. Um, yeah, let's do something like this. I think I like the simplicity of that better. Um, see if I like that if I want him to have a like do I want him to kind of have like a, a hunchback kind of feel or do I want him to be like I kind of like that mountain look This is pretty good, I feel like. I don't really feel like we need to do push too hard to get the effect to get the effect across. Yeah. That's fine. I think that's that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Sweet. Brick monster that throws bricks at the player. That seems a little extreme. Uh, uh, I'll keep it like this. This is good. We'll call this just. A, we'll just name this enemy. So we have a we have an enemy here. He doesn't have to be too complex, uh, complicated or complex. We'll leave him pretty simple right now. We're gonna we're not gonna animate him. We want him to actually. Uh, we want to actually work on the AI first. I think. Uh, so we have this setup, uh, which is a grid-based game, or the level design is grid-based, but the actual movement is not. Uh, you don't stop on grids, you don't have to do anything specifically with grids, uh, it's just that the level exists on a grid. So what we're going to do is, uh, the enemy will basically follow the player, and the interesting about this interesting thing about this is that we'll have to basically make the AI such that it can tell like oh if the player's here and I'm here I should I should drop down like that rather than uh, like going all the way around you should be able to tell like oh you know certain paths are basically one way uh, so we'll see how the, how we're gonna do that once we get there okay so next what we're gonna do is actually make the enemy so let's do that So let me remind myself, do I have pipes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that is basically our enemy struct. It's very basic. We're going to pull up LDTK because that's what we're using to build the levels. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to modify the level a little bit. Oh, it got updated. How nice. That's great. Um, let's not update right now. Not right now. So what we're going to do is basically make a entity specifically for an enemy. Uh, it can be red. That's fine. And then it will be actually a tile from the tile set, which we will edit. So this is our little tile set atlas of basically you know like little icons that we place on the map to indicate things like doors or ladders or whatever so we'll just make a an enemy uh
There we go. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, now we're just gonna grab that, and this is our enemy stand-in. So when we go over here, we can just place them. There we go. So we can just play. Oh yeah, there's two enemies here. Now when we go back to VS Code, we want to roll over to our level, and basically make it so that when we load the level, we just place the the relevant entity. Uh, okay, so we'll probably need to, we'll, we'll pretty much set this up largely the same way as we set up the, uh, largely the same way that we set up the player here. So we're just gonna put this over the right and just kind of crib this, so solve that object. We got, uh, what else? A reference to the level. There we go. All right, tag is going to be enemy. All right, we're good there. Object update. Okay, so we're good, largely. We're going to say enemy.object.update. We need to move the object around sometimes, and that's basically it. <clears throat> All right. Oh, we have to add it to the space. I forgot. Level dot space dot add. Okay, so now it should exist here. There's the little blocks that indicate that there's something there. That are there. Those are our enemies, uh, which is cool. But uh, yeah, like we, you know, this is what we're looking for. Um, yeah, was, actually, that's just it. That's cool. So we just need to actually draw them at that location. Um, so let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did for the player, which is basically we're going to make a uh, slice. It's going to be 16 by 16, like so. Whoops. There we go. We're going to put it probably right about there. Save it. Uh, we will export this. All right. Cool. Now we're going to use that slice to indicate basically what the offset is between the hitbox of this enemy and his actual sprite. It's, this is the offset of where we draw, basically. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and read the A sprite data. Uh, a sprite. This is the file. Uh, how do I do this over here? Do I read the bytes? I don't need this anymore. I read the bytes. Yeah, just like that. Assets that open. Okay. So we're just going to do it like this. All right. And we say the offset. I don't have a point class. Oh, why do I do it like that? Okay. All right, we're gonna make this a little bit better. I'm gonna make a point type, which is just an X and Y that are both float 64s. We're gonna go back to player, replace sprite offset X and Y with just one and make it a point just to make it a little bit easier to use. that all right point all right thanks Empty, that's fine, okay. One. Why am I doing this the stupid way? Let me just find and replace these. 
There we go. Uh, now what we can do is we can simplify this by making it so that the translate takes a point. And it returns a point. Like that, camera.x, so the camera position could also be a point. Okay, position, Now I could actually simplify this uh, again by basically making it so that we do something like this. Camera.position equals, well, there's no point in making this com more complicated than it needs to be. Why'd I even do this? Yeah, it's not that important. Like, eh, it makes a mild difference, but it's not, it's just not that important. We're fine. <laughs> Okay, let's not make this harder than it needs to be. So, the sprite offset, let's go back. Sprite offset, X is just gonna be a float 64, same thing for Y. Uh, we're just gonna read this. Uh, where is our slices? E, zero dot, yeah, okay. Oops. There we go. And this should be Y. There we go. Uh, Levon P says, claps. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome indeed. Uh, Lucretia says, did you always wear glass glasses? Yeah, I always wore glasses or contacts. All right. So we got the offset done. Uh, we're just going to draw this real quick. Uh, do I have global set up here? I do. Okay. Renderer.copy. We're going to copy... Uh... Oh, because I have an object, that's why. Okay. So we're going to copy the texture, the texture being the enemy sprite, which is going to be a text. Is it SDL texture? Maybe? Let's see. Enemy sprite. Well, after this, we'll just sprite sheet. It's going to be, uh, let's see. Load as resource. Load. How do I do it in player? I don't, I for, I've forgotten how I do this before. How oh, I was doing this. Okay, so we just load it from the game. So we say level.game.load resource. Assets, GFX, as image. We don't need the surface, so we'll just get the texture. Uh, and then we just copy down the sprite sheet. Uh, source is gonna be just zeros, yeah. Source is nil because we don't actually have any animation yet, which is fine. Destination is going to be an actual location, and it's going to be uh, x, y, for now we're just going to say, uh, well, let's do it the right way, enemy dot frame width, enemy dot frame height, okay. So X and Y are both going to be enemy dot level dot camera dot translate. We're going to translate the enemy's X and Y position. We're also going to add in the offset. And so X and Y is this. And so we just pass X and Y as in 32s and we're done that should basically do it Luigi just says uh how old are you solar i'm 25 feels old man 
Yo, it's not working whatsoever. How about that? Look at that. Look at that. That's insane. Okay, so that's wrong. Um, because we're wrong, loading the wrong sprite sheet. That's why. There's our dude. Cool. He's a little low. It feels like he's a little low on the ground. But the offset is working, right? Uh, let's... Yeah, let me try moving this around a little bit. I want to see if it's actually working, or am I just... No, okay, so it's just drawing him... No, it's... It's still drawing him, like, where... It... Let me see here. Uh... How old... Right, I'm sorry, how old am I? I'm 29. I'm 29. Uh, 25 feels old? Eh, I don't feel... I don't feel too old. I feel... I feel fine. I don't feel particularly too old. I, I feel like it's... You're... You feel the most old when you hang out with someone who's like... Oh yeah, I was born in like 2000. It's like... What? <laughs> like... <laughs> you hang out with someone and they're like... You're like, oh yeah, did you ever see like, you know... Uh, maybe like the original Teen Titans? And they're like, I was six. It's like... What? <laughs> like, you feel so young. I mean, you feel so old when someone... Is like, oh yeah, like, you know, oh, like, GameCube? Dude, that was so old. That was such a retro console. You're like, what? Retro? <laughs> Hold up. Like, what? PS2 is retro? And then you realize, like, you're turning to dust. That's uh, when you feel the most old, I think. Um, let's, let's see what the offsets are here. Yeah, Wind Waker being 20 years old is kind of insane. People born in 2000 or 21. It's just, yeah, it's just like, I, I didn't agree to any of that. I feel like I, hold on, let me, let me take a look at this here. I want to see what the actual data says. All right, it's one and one, yeah. So why is the offset? Oh, am I, I'm loading the wrong, I am, aren't I? I'm loading the wrong, uh, I'm loading the wrong data. Now he's, okay, yeah, that's right. All right, let's move it back. Uh, right there, let's save it, export it, run it. And we are properly positioned. All right, cool. He's on the ground. Uh, this dark blue is kind of clashing with the background. Not sure if the background is going to be perfect. Is going to be uh, if we're going to stick with that. But this is fine. I think for now, uh, we will call this relatively done. You know what? I don't agree with that. Let's make this. Let's just change the color. We can change it to be any other color, really. Let's change it to be a dark blue. That's fine. better okay now uh the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have these guys move around now the idea is they should basically seek out our uh heroine character uh the hero it also would probably be a good idea if we changed the colors of these Meh, that's okay we just want her want them to move around and, and chase the, the hero so the idea behind this uh actually hold on Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, P Xbox 360, PS3, and we are over 15 years old. It's retro, yeah. I don't know about retro being 15 years. It's not that long. Like that's the difference between like uh, probably the Force, like the 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 original trilogy, right? Star Wars, like they were probably 2005 or so. I wouldn't say those are retro. That's kind of like in the in the 90s was the in in 1990 was 1975 considered retro i guess but then i think it depends i think it depends on maybe what you're talking about like i wouldn't call a 1990 car retro but i would call the a 1970 car retro like a car from the 70s or 60s but music i could see someone saying like oh yeah you know music from the the 70s is retro even in the 90s, because it's kind of a big difference between 90s music and 70s music, music like late 90s to late 70s. It feels like the you well, but then you have the advent of the Internet and that influ influences stuff like, you know, electronic music kind of coming around. I don't know. I feel like maybe as time passes, the, the idea of retro gets close, kind of 
uh, between, let's say, the early 90s to the late 2000s, the concept of retro kind of compressed because of the advent of the internet and that both expanded people's horizons so people are more aware of other things, but then also um, that changes, that sped up the rate at which things happen, right? Because now you have more news, now you have people collaborating more, and now things are being, are kind of changing. You got, you're, you have more of a global influence with the internet. So I feel like maybe, you know, in a hundred years ago, retro would be considered like 50 years ago. But now retro is considered like five years ago, 10 years ago. Like, you know, you, you the PS4 is considered like, oh, that's kind of retro now, right? Because it's like you have the PS5. No one wants a PS4. People want PS5. PS3 is old and PS2 is classic. Um, it's interesting. Anyway. Okay, so we're, what we're doing here, we have this uh, setup. The general idea that I'm, I, I'm thinking about is basically we're gonna, going to uh, use a library that I made called Paths, specifically for pathfinding. And the idea is that we will place nodes at every point uh, where there's a ground segment. Uh, every 16 by 16, every, every square, there's gonna be a point as long as there's no object in the way. And then we connect them going down, but not up. Basically going up if there's a ladder or going down if there is a, uh, or going down, that's kind of it. Something like that, we'll see. We'll see how we can get it to work. The first step is to generate our path uh, map that basically uh, determines like where an enemy can move. So we're gonna do that here. Uh, let's see, grid, I think it's called. Let's see, paths dot, that won't work. I need to actually import it. So it's gonna be github.com slash solar moon slash paths. Uh, actually I need to go, it's called go get. Something like that. And then I need to, I straight up don't remember the, like the API for this. module declares this path ah uh, this is old i yeah hold on i always forget all right so here's what we're gonna do <laughs> uh our, my paths library for pathfinding as i as i be, i believe it should work fine but the module is declared incorrectly it should be this there we go um, beyond that, I think we should be fine. It should be something, yeah, we got cells, we got grids. Um. All cells. This is gonna be interesting because Oh, Aaron Morse uh, says, just showed up, what have I missed? Hello, welcome. Uh, you haven't really missed too much. Um, what we're thinking about is basically, we, we well, I, I, wait, hold on. There we go. Uh, I'm implementing uh, enemies into my 2D action arcade game, which are these brick guys, rock guys, which, which is fine, they look cool, uh, but they need to actually chase me around. So in order to do that, the idea is basically, we need to do pathfinding. Um, I have a pathfinding system, but now that I'm thinking about it, the pathfinding system I made, which is called Paths, uh, it works certainly fine, but the issue with it is essentially that it's made for a static map. But with a platforming game like this, the map is not static because you have situations like this, where if I'm down here, this enemy, rather than going all the way like this, he should simply walk off this, this edge. Um, conversely, uh, if he's here and I'm up here, he shouldn't try to like rise up here because there's no ladder. So basically where you are changes where, uh, what abilities essentially a cell grants you, where you can move. So the idea is we might not be able to use this system because it's made for a static, a static map. And I don't think there's a way for me to, def to basically change the cost of a cell. No, yeah, I can do that.
I think I think I think this will work actually because the each enemy will have its own map. And so basically it'll be like, okay, I want to go from here to here. How do I do that? All right. Set all the cells to be walkable unless they're on like in the ground or something in, in a wall. So he'll be like, okay, I can just go this way. All right. So that works fine. If I'm here and he's here, it will do the same thing, but it will basically set these cells to be not walkable because they're not lower. They're not on the ground. Yeah, it, it'll work out. It'll work out. I think I'm seeing it now. Rishadzi says, do you have a pathfinding system that you have from Girand, or is that too old? That is too old. I, well, I do have Girand still. I do have the source code, but I, uh, I think the pathfinding system, well, the entire game was, was written in Java, so I wouldn't be able to use that directly, but I don't think the path system from that would work that well. I think it's basically this concept. I don't even know if there was a pathfinding system. I don't think I don't know if there was in Girand. I'm trying. I don't believe so. I don't think there was a, actually a pathfinding. Moving up is not possible unless it's on top of a ladder. Moving down costs less than move less than moving left and right. Well, I don't know if I if moving down should cost less than moving left and right. We'll see. We'll see how this works. We'll see how it works. Okay. But this should work. So. I don't believe I need to do anything else. I don't believe. It looks like I made some changes here, though. Yeah, these are costs are now floats. Okay. Not sure why. I guess. I guess it just makes it a little easier. Float. I was using. Oh, I was using this for my rogue light. I guess I was using it for for rogue light game. Rogue light. Okay. Liam says hello. Hello. Welcome to the stream. All right, so we're not gonna get too uh, lost in the sauce here. We're just gonna go ahead and commit this. Uh, it should be fine. I just need to base. I just needed to change this uh, module name because it was case sensitive, which is I feel like unnecessary and just makes things complicated. Um, nothing else seems to be largely different. Let me actually. You know what? Let me switch the music up. Give me. Give me into the time stream. That's a into the time time stream is always a good time. All right, so we're gonna head over to. Can I? I cannot. All right. Uh, let's head over to paths. We want to just make sure all of these are not executable. It doesn't know. Okay. All right, there we go. Now only these are actually changed. It's no, not changed. Fine. 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 Okay, so we should be good. So we're just gonna commit this. Uh, say API changes plus go dot mod change. Uh, mod domain change. Uh, let me double check to see what. Let me double check to see what. Uh, no tags. All right, we're good. These are All right. Okay. So I think we should be fine. We're just gonna pop back over here. Try that again. Let's see. Go mod ID. Path at none. Updating to. Let me see if I can put in my go mod here manually because it's not seeing it. GitHub.com. Solution paths at master. Or 
Does that work? Or is it at head? Or maybe it's just head. I remember being able to like type head or master and just have it like download the latest version like just grab the latest version it must be master there we go okay we're good cool all right so let's give this a shot so we're gonna say we have a path right we have a grid um path finding Grid, which is a paths dot grid. There we go. Uh, dot new grid. Uh, our grid width, height, cell width, and height. Let's see. New grid of grid width times grid height. Cell width and height changes the size of each cell in the grid. Okay. This is used to translate world position to cell position, i.e., the cell position to five with it. Right, right, right. Okay. So, what we're going to do here, we actually need to figure this out. This will be level dot uh, width level dot height level dot cell width cell height. Okay. Then we wish to also well, actually, we, we defined the grid already. So... Okay. Let's see. Now, this is actually in the... Yeah, this is in the cellular X and Y position. Let's actually do a couple things here. I'm going to replace this with whoops this with my local paths folder and then we want to also there we go we also want to in the cellular we just want to change that um Change that documentation, just be a little clearer. There, okay, so now the idea here is basically we, we want to path uh, uh, or, or, or loop through each cell, each brick in our level and make sure that that's not path passable. Um, so we're, let's make a function for this first. We want to basically make a function for get a path. Um, doesn't really matter what. I guess we'll just say x and y plus x four. So that basically, when we call this, it will do the stuff to get us a path, which is this. Uh, okay, so we say. We want to make a path. Let me see here. Game object update draw depth. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do, uh, because we specifically want to find the player. We're going to do this. We're going to make a function that allows us to find... No, because there's no means of actually identifying objects yet. So we're just going to do this. We're going to say for blank 
MJ and range enemy dot game objects. MJ dot blank. All right, let's do something like this. So then we say enemy dot path to player dot object dot x player dot object. I guess the alternative way to do this would be instead to loop through every. Ah, uh, this is this is fine. Uh, the cool one says, "What kind of algorithm will you use?" Uh, I believe I'm using A star. Uh, should give me best basically the, the the lowest cost and therefore fastest pass path possible did work we'll see so we're gonna make a path to the player uh this is basically only if our current path is not is uh non-existent okay so then the path we want to generate is actually where this comes in um so Okay, so we say four blank cell in range cell cell dot. Let's see, can we print out the cell X and Y, please? I just want to see if it's actually looping through all of them like I should. Shield Hero says, hello, Solar. Hi. How's everything going? Uh, I don't think this is correct. It's, let's see, 527 by 123. Feels like that's rather large, isn't it? This, there's not that many cells in here. Uh, 527. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, the grid should just be 3215. So there's something else going on here. Uh, let's see, new grid. Grid width by grid height. Oh, I said width in terms of... Oh, this is stupid. Why did I do it like this? Cell width, cell height. Uh, returns new grid of grid width and grid height. Okay, so let's do this. In pixels. That's fine. Let's... Yeah, that seems wise. Let's do it that way. So grid height divided by cell height. Grid width divided by cell width, something like that. Should basically do the trick. Let's go ahead and give it a shot, see how that goes. All right, this is better, 32 by 15. That is correct, 32 by 15, okay. Now what we wanna do is basically say that every cell doesn't work. Or like every cell essentially is uh, like free. So we'll define every cell to be walkable. Because, you know, every cell should be unless <clears throat> there's something solid in there. Uh, Shield Hero says, are you still using Raylib? I just picked it up. Uh, no, actually, I'm, I moved to SDL2. It's already 512. Oh my gosh. This music's got me sleepy. Alright, so... This is good. This is good so far. Alright, so... Every cell is walkable, that's fine. What we want to do is... Define every cell to be walkable, as long as it's not in a solid object. So we're going to use... The space for this. So we want to basically check the cell in the cells X and Y. Uh, it will be one and one, and we are solid. Check, what's this? We say, if check dot What, what is this? It returns an it returns an object. 
Returns the first object within those cells that contains the tag. Okay. So check is not you know. Uh, then cell that walkable equals false. Otherwise, cell that walkable equals true. Okay. All right. Uh, Shield Hero says, "What issues did you face with Raylib? Uh, Raylib Go is kind of out of date. I'm using Raylib Go specifically. So if you're using Raylib just vanilla, you know Raylib or a different port, it might be more up to date. But Raylib Go is kind of out of date. Uh, also, um, it's built on GF GLFW, which has issues with gamepads." Um, in my experience with with my gamepad if you have like a normal xbox one controller or a normal ps4 controller or something like that probably would be fine but this is a 8-bit dough controller that can serve as like a nintendo switch pro controller or a xbox one controller or whatever when connected to a computer and dlfw does not really play well with that um and also uh input language Management issues with uh, with Ray uh, with uh, master plan, so I moved that as well to SCL2 or am moving it. Um, okay, so this is working okay. So let's tr try this. All right, so collisions are being found. We're good. Okay, so then that means that some cells are are not walkable and some are. That's good. So we're going to actually debug this. We're going to say if enemy.level.game.debug, then we basically want to loop through and draw this. Uh, Rashad Z says, uh, will this work with my Mayfly arcade stick? I, I'm assuming that the game has an X input library. Uh, not sure about X input, you know, specifically, but it should work with your with your arcade stick, yeah. Because um, I'm using SDL2, and that, I believe, supports it a little bit better. But we'll see. <laughs> I don't have any arcade sticks. I should have one, just to... It, it would be cool to have one for this, actually. Maybe I'll get one. Maybe I'll, I'll look it up. If I can get one for cheap, I'll, I'll see if I can get one so I can try it out. Alright, so if the debug mode is on, we basically whip, just want to draw the points so we can see, basically, if the cells are walkable or not. So we say, uh, for blank cell in range, grid. All cells, cell, or rather SDL, or how do I do this? Globals dot renderer dot draw point cell dot x times. I'm just gonna say sixteen cell dot y times sixteen. Some reason it's not like it's not doing what it should do there. There we go. Okay, let's see if that kind of works. Oh, there they are. Okay. All right. So there's the points. Uh, they need to trans translate actually. Uh, in the need to translate. Level enemy that level that space that cell with I guess I could just say enemy path by me grid that cell with there we go copy that there we go Y L height okay we have X and Y X being here Y being there okay all right so now we got this. All right, so there's this, there's the points. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Um, can we actually? Center them like this. Uh, and then we also wish to be able to not have them be weirdly colored and stuff. Uh, let's do that. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, set draw color. It's gonna be. Uh, let's make them yellow. Or wait, this is. You wait. 
you and Tate. Uh, let's make them yellow, which would be red and green. And then if they're not walkable, we'll make them some other color. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, now uh, we just say basically that's fine. Let's say if cell dot walkable. What's it else? Green. Uh, we will actually go back to LDTK and take out this enemy, so we can easily see you know what the grid is doing for each individual enemy. Yo, here we go. So we got green ones here and here, but there's yellow ones elsewhere. Uh, so actually, I have those flipped. It should be like that. And let's use red instead of green, so it's more obvious. There we go. Okay. So we got red dots indicating basically, no, it's not valid. We got green dots indicating, yes, this is a place you can go. Okay. So that's a good start. Um... There are situations like this where it's like, yeah, we're going to basically say this is fine. Uh, actually, I guess we should actually just fix this by not putting solid over, like underneath the 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 uh, ladders. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, well, actually, I guess that's un inevitable. You're going to have situations where you're going to put the solid underneath the ladder. So we're going to say if there's a ladder there, then you're good. How we do that... We say... We're going to do this specifically. We say basically if there's a ladder, then we're just going to say it's, it's okay. Or let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's try something like that. Okay. So ladders are passable um, specifically, and they override it being solid other otherwise. But uh, yeah, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, that's good, that's good. So the next thing we're going to do is basically determine whether this is walkable or this is walkable. Okay, we'll we'll try this in a, in a couple of seconds. I have an idea. I think that it'll work, but we just I just want to kind of see if it works. See if this works first. So, what we want to do now is basically make it so that if we're trans trying to get to the player, we generate a path, starting from here, from the closest cell where the enemy is to the closest cell where the enemy is or the player is. <clears throat> so we say enemy dot path binding grid. Get path from cells. Yeah, let's actually just say, rename this path. Can't do it? Alright, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make you do it. Uh, path, can I... We can't do it here? Why can't... Why can't we do it here? Because... It has errors? What errors? Or maybe path between would be better. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to go back to here. Okay, so we're going to get a path. Uh, we want to generate a path. Oh wait, does this... Is this a problem? Because there's a path. Oh, it's a grid. Okay, grid. Okay, we're good. Alright, so we're generating a path uh, going from the enemy's position. Whoops. To the end goal. 
Uh, we don't want to use diagonals. Walls do block your diagonals, and that gives us a path. And so then we just say enemy.path equals this. Okay. Now, what we want to do is basically say if debug is on, we have the, we're drawing the cells, right? And then we say if uh, enemy.path is not equal to nil, then this is where we actually want to draw it. So let's actually print this out so we can see what the path looks like. All right, so we basically have, it's a list of cells, that's what it is. Going from one cell to the next. So 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and then it starts dropping. 3, and the Y uh, increases here, and it's increasing. So that this is the path that it's, it's drawing. So this is good. <clears throat> so we say basically for cell in rain enemy dot path cells uh cell dot so we have the x and y we want to basically just do something like globals dot renderer dot draw rect make a rect and we're gonna go cell dot x times you know what let's just do this So it's x, y, 16, 16. All right, so we have zero, zero. Well, actually, let's go with yellow for this. And 128. So, all right. <clears throat> So there's the path. This is the path that it says we should go down. Uh, I forgot to translate. That's why this doesn't look right. There we go. All right, so this is the path that it basically thinks it should take to get to where I started, which is cool. Uh, what we want to do now is actually update that path that periodically either we can update it every so often or Whatever, let's let's update it every so often. We'll say the path timer is something like mm, I think there's a timer. Yeah uh, Let's see. So the path timer is gonna be time dot new ticker let's see it returns a new, a new ticker containing a channel that will send the time on the channel after each tick the period is specified all right we'll make a new ticker uh must be greater than zero we'll say every quarter second or no i guess actually the better way to do that would be like every every like 200 milliseconds let's say that's this year. Can't you? Oh, uh, time dot. Oh, it's a ticker. There we go. Also, it's a pointer. There we go. All right. So, uh, yeah, we can just say like enemy dot path timer dot. We just okay. So it's, it's just going. So I think we can just do like a select. Uh, we can just do it like a select on the enemy dot. Oh, I see. It's, it's like in case enemy. Right? Am I doing this wrong? I don't think so. Am I? I think I must be. Dot C. So basically every, let's see, selection is a simple channel send receive instead of one with a single case. Okay, so uh, then we have the default uh, where we just basically pass. All right, so the idea is every so often that we go ahead and just, yeah, this is such a, this isn't necessary. Let's just do this the simple way. Uh, we'll just say path timer is just gonna be a time dot time. Uh, and then we don't have to do, do all this stuff. We can just say basically if time dot since enemy dot path timer is greater than 0 
uh, then we can just run this code and get the path to the player. And then we just say enemy.pathTimer is equal to time.now. And this should be like in seconds. There we go. So every quarter second, the path will update. That's fine. Yeah. So he says we should go this way. And then here he says we should go this way. All right. Now, the issue comes in because... Um, well, I mean, this isn't a valid path. You can't get to me this way. Let's say you, uh, well, yeah, you can't get to me this way. <laughs> That's just what it is. So in order to get to me, there's two ways that this guy can go. This is not a, this particular path won't work. He will end up getting to me, but he basically needs to go this way. Or he needs to go this way. If there's no ladder here, let's just assume there isn't, just to make things simple. He has to go this way. So how can we make sure that he basically says, yeah, I can't do this because this path is invalid. We can make it so that paths uh, are not walk uh, cells are not walkable unless they're basically above the ground. So that means that basically these cells wouldn't be valid. These cells wouldn't be valid. So he would have to either be on a ladder or on the ground, which is fine. Let's start with that. We'll add uh, falling down it as a special case, maybe. But let's let's try this first. So if check, uh, da, 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 else if check, uh, da, da, da. okay. Walkable, true, false, true. Um, so really, we just want it to be if it's if you're on a ladder, it's fine. If it's a wall, it's not. Um, so really, we just basically want it to be false unless. It's either on a ladder, or you are... So either you're on a ladder, or you are... Above the ground, so... Let's do it this way. So if the ground is nil and above is not equal, it is nil, then it's walkable. So let's try something like that. This is wrong. Let's try this again. So if ground is solid, ground is ground plus one, cell above uh, ground, okay, above, and you got ground. So if ground is not, okay, that's, I think, better. Okay, so these cells are valid. The ladder is valid. These cells are valid. The ladder is valid, yeah. So this is a good start. Now we just want to also add this option, where basically you can drop down. How you can determine that is basically make every cell surrounding a valid cell valid. Basically we need to just like check to see if from each green cell if you move up yeah like these are valid because they are on the same y-axis as the enemy currently but then also they are next to a green valid a green cell so like that is valid but not that this is a good start though this is definitely a good start This, maybe maybe we just leave it like this. This is fine. Although, if you know that they, like, won't come down on you. That's, that's too simple. That's too simple. We want it to be where they, like, they are really aggressive and they follow you pretty, pretty hard. And we also have, need to have, handle doors. That's true. How do we have doors? I guess if we make it so that... 
How do we handle doors? Path. Okay, so yeah, this system might not work because basically it's assuming too much. This is a good start though, but it's assuming too much. I'll have to probably change this later on because it, it's just, it's, it's not gonna work. But the new system needs to basically not assume for one thing that the cells that are connected are necessarily next to each other. So for example, doors can, you know, it, he should be able, to, be able to tell like, oh, if I go through this door, I'll reappear here. And so I can go from, instead of going all the way over like that, I can go this way, right? So he should know that. Um, the next thing is that falling down is a one-way path. So we need to be able to tell, basically, it would be easier if we were to be able to tell, like, this cell is walkable, this cell is walkable, this cell is walkable only when falling. So if you're going from here to here, it's valid, but if you're going from here to here, it is not valid. So how we can do that is to just re recreate the, make a new path system. That's, that's what it is. Um, what I'll do, because I don't want to just end the stream without really any progress, um, even though this is pretty good progress, I want to actually have him follow you, so I'll implement it in its current system, but I think the end result is that we'll need to like actually have him... We'll need to uh, change the, the pathfinding system to like add the ability for him to know where things are and it'll be have to be it will have to be a little bit more complicated but this is good this is a fine i think approach to start all right so this is fine uh the path is fine so we'll just make it so he follows you so we just say basically um delta x delta y are both float 64s and then we just say if enemy.path is not equal nil, then enemy.path.next. You know what? Yeah, this would be... So we need a new pathfinding system that allows for one-way paths. That allows for, well, I guess we'll just do it like this. So the new system has to allow for one-way paths. It also needs to allow for uh, nodes, or I guess one-way nodes. And also nodes that connect Regardless of location, teleporters, for example. Okay. So we need that new pathfinding system. Uh, it also would be nice if we could have, like, next dot and then get the world position. There we go. All right. So if next dot, so we'll say nx is equal to next dot x times uh, enemy dot pathfinding grid cell width next y cell height if nx is greater than enemy dot object dot x. You know what? Can we also um, float positions? All right. So if index is greater than enemy, okay. So then we just say enemy dot delta x equal to. I guess we'll just say the x. x one and we say else if n x is less than int enemy dot object dot x the x is negative one let's say if n y is 
less than be like what's the other one? Okay. Let's go do that. Okay. So I'm going to tell if the position is on the 539. Uh, if an position is in contact with the node, uh, one way cells. All right. Uh, so then we just say, okay. All right, so that should be, or wait, advance, that's what it is. That should basically do it. All right, so he's not perfect. There's there's definitely issues, but he's uh, very <laughs> aggressively and scarily seeking me out. That's, that's very cool. Oh Lord, this is, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a nightmare. This is just a nightmare. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh lord, he's so aggressive, dude. Oh my gosh. I mean like even without being able to like like climb stuff, it's just like yo, this man he's on you, dude. Like he just you can't run away. He's jankly following me and it's just like I'm I'm barely fast enough to evade my death. Oh lord, okay. And this is just this is just a, a death trap. This is just a death box. Wow, okay. Wow, well, that that works. <laughs> that just works. Um, this actually should probably be like less than or equal to two. That's the speed with which he's moving. That's why he's moving so jankily. Uh, I thought that was incorrect. Let's see. Oh, no, I guess it should be next. Yeah, now he's, now he's better. Oh man, he's he's cutting corners, dude. You see, you saw how he gets up that. You saw how he got up that 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 ladder. He just like slid up, dude. Oh my, god. oh my gosh. He just like shoop. It's like yo, I didn't, I never, I never taught you to do that. You just did that on your own. Okay, well that's that's basically it. Um, yeah. All right, well we got a, we got some basic uh, pathfinding. We got some basic pathfinding in here. Uh, let's go ahead and put the other the other enemy in here. We're gonna oops, we're going to plop him down. We're gonna put him down there, and we're also gonna make him move a little bit slower. Uh, we'll make him move a little bit slower than that. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna be a little bit of a, ch a little chunky, slow boys, but that that's fine. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, they're they're just they're just on you, on me. 
Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, this is exactly what it needs to be, basically. Yeah, brick monsters. Not bad. Um, they should be solid, so that they can't phase into each other, and that, and so that I can actually land on their heads. Uh, let's implement that. Why not? That's 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 gonna be part of it. Um, they, yeah, they just need it to be solid. Uh, moving. This is fine. DX, DY. Okay, so we just, then you just need to say basically, if uh, D. What do you mean? Level. Dot. Base dot check no enemy dot object dot check the x zero uh solid check check equals check dot uh valid uh then we say the x zero or no the x equals check dot contact x uh, that's fine. And then just the same thing for dy. Y, y. Okay. So basically that should make us that we can't walk, they can't walk through solid stuff. It would be cool if they threw themselves at you. Huh. Palette, I check. Is that the issue? Uh, is, uh, why isn't, why aren't they moving now? Let's we'll see. What I? Oh, solid. Oh, okay. Oh, it's because... Ah, uh, okay. It's because we made them solid. That's right. Um, that's a good question. Good, that's good. Yeah, this, this isn't solid because they're there. Alright, we'll just do it like this. And check is... I'm equal to save object. Not even nil and check. Oh no, that's not what I'm looking for. If ground is not equal to nil and above is equal to nil, or yeah, so something like this I think will work for now. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it doesn't work for now. Yeah, we, this won't work because they're solid and they're solid. Like, they're looking for specifically solid for, like, walkability purposes. So, what we're going to do, we're going to make, I guess, I suppose we will make a an additional solid check specifically for moving objects. Let's try that. Just that might be enough. Let's see. Uh... Uh, that's interesting. Why are they? Why are they doing that? What did I change? The moon solid. Solid, solid. Moving solid. Moving solid. That's weird. Uh, melting says, "What happened to the other game you were working on?" Um. Yeah, that works. 
Uh, the other game I, I was working on, basically I paused because I've been working on other things. Uh, are you using Raylib Golang bindings? No, I'm using STL2. This is interesting because if I make them moving solid, if I add that tag, moving solid is what we're checking for. Okay. This is weird. Why is it? Where are they bumping into? Moving solid. Moving solid? Alright, this is an interesting bug that I'll have to fix. Um, I'm not sure why they're colliding with something here, because there's nothing in this area that they would need to collide with. I think they're colliding with essentially themselves. Which is weird, because, yeah, there, it's just, there's nothing there. So I'll have to investigate it a little bit more. Let me, let me see if there's... Something I can come up with real quick, but I'm not sure what the issue is. Let's see. What is going on? Okay. What sells that option? I'm going to check that out. Mm, okay, that's what's going on. All right. Okay, so sell that as well. Is this... Object or is this so it's either in the ignore object list, or this is yourself. Do we want to skip it? Tags, not contain stats. It's tags. All right, that might be better. There we go. So now the end result of this uh, should be basically they don't like move into the move into. All right, well at least they don't move into each other. That's good. I'm not sure why the first guy got stuck though.
Okay, that's yeah, that's that's basically correct. So they like actually are physically like they're not like moving into each other. That's better. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, that's a good start. That's definitely a good start. Definitely. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty far up there. Let's see. I still have a few minutes. I wonder if I could animate this. Hmm. Let's see. I guess I might as well give it a shot. Let's see. We got that strike, and then we need a cross. I'll just copy this one for that. Move it over here, move this over here. Not bad, not bad. This looks weird. Uh, Rashad Z says, off top, how hyped are you for going to 4? I feel like this is the equivalent to when Unity transitioned from 4 to th uh, 5. I'm not really hyped. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't really use Goto uh, that much anymore. Um, I am probably going to use it to finish I Know Who I Am, and maybe by then... Because it's been, it's been like transforming, or... Like, it's been moving to Goto 4 for like, you know, a couple of years or whatever. Like, it feels like it's been a couple of years now, so I'm not like super hyped i just hope it's done soon um and i hope they fix some of the issues that i've been running into or i i've i've ha i've had happen to me that i've run into before um like that would be good if, if they got fixed that's basically all i want is fixes i don't care about i don't really care about like better 3d performance i don't really care about any of that stuff i just want like oh yeah the editor doesn't do the stuff that it used to do let's it doesn't do the the bad stuff it used to do like that's basically it i'm not looking for or asking for anything else it's just fixes i just want fixes that would be ideal to me uh but then again i haven't used uh 3d so maybe people who are like using you know hardcore 3d users are like oh man you know it needs more like performance you know it needs like better this it needs more of that you know better particle effects more of this yeah, I haven't, I haven't uh, really done too much 3D stuff, so I wouldn't know. Um, but for me personally, it just felt like the hardest thing 
was the other stuff. That, should, that actually should be further like that. I think this is fine, probably. Let's get start. Uh, I guess I can try a climbing animation. New global illumination system, physics system, occlusion cooling, Vulcan ren renderer. Yeah, like that's that's all like cool 3D stuff. I just want the editor to be better. <laughs> I, I just want I just want the editor to just like not be so bad. Uh, and it, I mean it, it, it's it's it hurts a little bit to say that because like I do like Goto. I do you know I recommend it, but personally I just like ran into different bugs and stuff, and it's just like. Like, I'm, uh, I, that's all I really, like, personally want is just like, oh yeah, it, you know, uh, it doesn't, like, have issues with, uh, re reloading scripts. Like, I, I've never been able to, I don't think I've been able to have it, like, reload scripts. Uh, which is not a big deal, um, but I mean, like, that's one of the, like, advantages of having a dynamic language engine is that like the scripts can be reloaded right like hot reloading that's something that other engines can't do and i've never really been able to have it work so it's just kind of like that should work um it felt like it felt like or i i remember go to like caching stuff like caching scripts where it's like i may i wrote the script run goto and then it's not like updating or the gui like, the GUI <clears throat> exported variables wouldn't update. It's just, like, weird little issues like that. This doesn't look very good, but that's fine. I think it's too round. His head is more square. Lucas uh, says Goto with VS Code is not good. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, that combination isn't. It didn't work particularly well. I mean, it worked okay, but there were were some bugs with that uh, approach. And yeah, I would I like if you use. I believe I used Goto with, G, well, I use VS uh, Goto with VS Code, and yeah, I did run into some issues before.
All right, that's a pretty good climbing animation. Uh, let's try that out. So we're gonna uh, let's see. Basically, say, oh, go Lucretia says I don't really have issues with hot reloading if I do everything in Goto. Um, yeah, I I feel like I've had issues with hot reloading even in Goto's editor, but that might be fixed now. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Alright, so this is a general... Alright, that should work. Climb, we got walk. Um... Oh, that's why, okay. There we go. I forgot about this. So now in draw, we basically say, well, actually, I guess I can move this out here and into here. And then we can also say flip, STL flip, none. If delta x is less than zero, then flip SDL flip horizontal. That's fine. And then we just go, and when we copy, we copy EX. Uh, no. Don't care about that. So I guess we can actually pass nil, and then flip. There we go. Alright, so this should kind of give us what we're looking for. It does not give us what we're looking for. Um, we have to actually get the source position now, because we are actually animating. Uh, frame, and then we want to pass a steel X. It's going to be source X, source Y, and then also, uh, frame width, frame height. There we go. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. Look at him go. He's coming, they're coming, they're coming for our blood, dude. They're coming out for, oh my gosh, he climbed so fast. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, the climb animation should be played backwards if they're uh, climbing down, though. So we just go and say, basically, if enemy.delta y is less than zero, then anim speed, you know, we don't have to do that. We can just say uh, enemy.current animation uh, direction... Play backward. Play forward. Okay. That's basically it. That didn't work. Why? Because it's... Yeah, okay, that's why. Oh, it's, yeah. I think that's fine. I honestly can't tell if he's if it's playing backwards or not. I think it's playing forward still. Yeah, it's still playing. Because if it was playing backwards, it would play like. Yeah, his hands would be moving up. Okay, so it is playing forward still. Why is that the case? Let's see. How did I do it with the player? Didn't I just? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me go back to. Oh wait, did I do it in the wrong direction? Is that what I did? 
Uh, I did. That's why. There we go. Alright, that's fine. Yeah, that's better. Oh lord, they coming. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is, yeah. This is, this is the game. This is it. Alright, well that's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. These guys are very interesting, and they are definitely, <laughs> they're, they're definitely, uh, coming after me. That's cool. Uh, and we basically know what we need to do to get it to be working perfectly. Uh, we still need nodes to connect, uh, over distance, so we can have, like, these doors be connected in the pathfinding system, and then we also need to have one-way, uh, cells, so that you can, like, fall down, for example. It's an interesting problem that we'll have to solve, but that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, uh, and it's been fun. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon. This has been uh, the making of a game um, known as Door Jam. I've been working on it for a couple weeks, and it's shaping up. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we'll be able to do this again next week, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side next time. See ya.